we like to think that we all have the same rights according to the Constitution. Unfortunately, this is too often not the case. In the U.S., there are approximately 56 million people living with a disability, more than half of which live with a severe disability. Labor participation among disabled people is about 20%, while the same figure is about 68% among the able-bodied. Not surprisingly, poverty and low socioeconomic status are significantly worse among the disabled. But according to U.S. law, anyone with less than 40 quarters of work credits before becoming disabled may only qualify for up to a dismal $750 per month in Supplemental Security Income, or SSI. For most people, this income is far from adequate with respect to cost of living, housing, raising a family, and especially when trying to pay for medical bills. Though disabled individuals typically qualify for state Medicaid programs compared to private insurance or employee-backed insurance, Medicaid falls far short of granting access to reliable health care and in many cases it can restrict options for prescription drugs and especially surgical procedures. Disability rights advocate Tammy Smith had this to say about disability in America. Being on Medicaid, there's a lot of doctors that don't accept it. You either got to drive way out of your way to find one, and then you don't get the best care at all. They don't cover certain medications that you're supposed to be on. They don't give you the best care because you're on Medicaid. Send you out there and they expect you to go to the doctors and then find out then. I went to a doctor down here. I just got on Medicaid because of my disability. And because I'm on Medicaid, there was people that were going in front of me. I sat there for six hours six hours trying to get seen by a doctor. Yes, I went into a dentist that accepted my Medicaid, but when I went in there, they didn't wait for the numbing to take effect. They put the gas mask on my face for two seconds. I was not numb, and they ended up having nurses and doctors in there holding my legs down, my arms down, and the dentist himself put his knee on my chest and pulled my tooth before I was even numb. I went straight to the police department and made a police report on that. That's inhumane. And if I had better insurance, that wouldn't have happened to me. That's how I feel. Now I'm scared to death to go to a dentist. I'm scared to death to go to a doctor for them to tell me I need another surgery when I know that it's not going to do anything for me. Medicaid aside, one of the biggest problems with disability is the approval process. In many cases, it takes years, requires an attorney, and if the claimant is caught working any job, regardless of their need of income for family and personal expenses, the claim is automatically denied and must be resubmitted all over again. According to federal data obtained by the Washington Post, almost 19,000 people have died while waiting for disability approval since 2016, a 15% increase from previous years. This is Mike Tomchuk from Mott Community College, signing off at WFAH 102.1 LPFM, where Flint Arts Happen, a program of Greater Flint Arts Council.